Scallywags of Swift, it's Prof G, and in this lesson we're going to use what we learned in the prior lesson to complete the one button conditional challenge, then we're going to explore our solution and a playground to learn more about the very important Swifty concepts of constants and scope. I'm well aware that your constant condition is awesomeness, so let the big learning begin. If you're new here, welcome. You might want to check out the course playlist to see how we got here. When we last worked on You Are Awesome, we had a single message that was visible when the app started. It says, I am a programmer. And there are two buttons. Click the Awesome button, and the text view changes to show Awesome. Click the Great button, and the text view changes to show Great. Well, now we're going to use what we learned about conditionals in the prior lesson to complete the one button message toggle challenge. So you should modify the You Are Awesome app so that it looks and behaves like the app at the right. The app should start out with the text field and the image blank. You should also replace the two buttons with a single button that says press me. And when the button is pressed, the text should toggle between two messages. You are awesome and you are great. And the image should also toggle when the button is pressed, alternating between the symbols named sun.max.fill and hand.thumbsup. Remove any frame restrictions from the image so that it takes up the maximum available space while preserving its width to height aspect ratio. So you should know how to do this. Why don't you pause, give it your best shot. And when you're ready, resume. And let's compare answers. So we have an H stack in here. This lets us put two buttons side by side, and we only need one button. So I'm going to delete the second one. And since we only have one button, we don't need the H stack either. It wouldn't hurt to keep it in here, but it's extra code and it's not doing anything. So let's get rid of it. I'm going to highlight this first line with the H stack and delete it. And I'm also going to delete its closing curly. Now, when we do this, the button remains indented, and it should really be outdented one level so that it's flush with the other views in the stack. Now, your code will still run. This isn't an error, but you always want to keep your code neatly formatted. It's going to make your code easier to read, and it'll also help you spot errors. So I'm going to show you a shortcut that you can use to automatically reformat your entire file. And this one is really useful, so you want to commit this one to memory. First, to select the entire file, you want to press Command-A. That's Select All. And Command-A is a standard in Mac application, so you may already know that. But then to fix the indents, think I for indent, you're going to press Control, not Command-I. So it's Command-A, Control-I. And when I do that, whoa, the button is now flush at the same left indent level as the other views. Nice. So I often see students sometimes have their indents off. I'm going to mess mine up right now. That's a really bad sign because it makes it tougher to identify if your curly braces are off or if you've got another error in your code. In fact, if you're using code completion the right way, it should add a closing curly brace every time it adds an open curly brace. So the first rule is to try to use code completion as much as you can. Second piece of advice is to keep your code neatly formatted. So down here you can see that I've deliberately messed up the indentation on my curly braces. And because my code works, this isn't going to stop my code from working, but it makes my code harder to read. And then remember our two shortcut keys we use together. Command-A to select all, Control-I to fix indents. Say it like a mantra, Command-A, Control-I, Command-A, Control-I. Commit it to memory. Those bad indents are fixed. One of the most useful shortcuts you'll have. Use it regularly and keep your code neat. And I'll get rid of this unneeded space so that my button modifiers are right underneath my buttons close and curly. And remember, we're going to change the button title to press me. There you go. And now let's write an if conditional to toggle our message between you are awesome and you are great. So we'll start off here by saying if message double equals, remember that compares the left side to the right side. It'll be either true or false. It only gives you a Boolean result. And we'll compare to see if message is equal to the string you are awesome exclamation point. Then open curlies, Xcode writes the close curly. And if the message equals you are awesome, well, then we want to change the message equal to one equal this time, the string you are great exclamation point. And we can delete message equals awesome down below. We don't need that. But after the closing curly, we'll say else open and close curlies. And in between message equals you are awesome. And it's absolutely vital to make sure that you have the spelling and punctuation of this assignment down here identical to your comparison operator up here. If anything is different in these two phrases, your code's not going to work. More on that in a minute. So again, the logic here is if the message equals you are awesome, then change the message to you are great. Otherwise, change it to you are awesome. That's it. That'll let it toggle between those two options. So now if we click, you can see that we're toggling between you are awesome and you are great. Nice. But remember, our text view is supposed to be empty when the app starts. 
So I'm going to head up here to the state variable, our message variable, where we initialize it to I'm a programmer. And instead, I'm going to change this to be initialized to the empty string. Now, we also want to change the image. And remember, we also determine the image based on a string. Right now, we just have the string literal in here, Swift in between double quotes. When you write a string like this with a double quotes in a statement, it's called a string literal. But instead, we're going to use a variable. So let's create the variable here. We'll say at state private var. And I'm going to call this image string, lower camel case. And I'm going to set this equal to empty string. And then when I replace the string literal of the string Swift. Make sure the double quotes are all gone. And I'm just going to enter image string in here. But now look at the goodness I can do with the image string. If my message is you are awesome, well, not only do I want to change the message to you are great, but I'm also going to change the image string equal to, and in between double quotes, it's going to be the string hand dot thumbs up. And in the else condition, it's going to be image string equals, and in double quotes, sun dot max dot fill. Let's try this out. The app is starting. We see nothing in the text view, nothing in the image view. We have one button that says press me. Let's press it. Boom. We see sun.max.fill and you are awesome. How come? Well, at this point, message does not equal you are awesome. It equals empty string. So if it equals empty string, we set the message equal to you are awesome and the image string equal to sun.max.fill. Click it again and the message string is equal to you are awesome. So we change it to you are great and the hand dot thumbs up. That's how our logic works. Although there's one other thing I asked you to do. I asked you to get rid of the frame that was around the image. So let's delete that. We made a code change so the code restarts and we toggle between happy sun, you are awesome and thumbs up, you are great. Now let's learn a few more things. First, be careful of using literals in your code. Now what I mean by that is you see we're reusing the literal statements. We're typing strings directly into our code in the if statement and in the assignment statements. And it's less of a big deal in a small app like this, but it can be a good idea to avoid literals when you can and instead create constants to hold values and then use the constants in your code. Let me show you why. Imagine I make a typo and inside the end closure, I write you are awesome, but the word are here, A-R-E, has an uppercase A, but I still have a lowercase A in the if clause up here. So now let's run our code. Click the button, and we first see you are awesome, uppercase A. Click again, and ho! Oh, every time I click, it says you are awesome with an uppercase A. It's stuck here. Do you know what happened? The first time we went through, we had an empty string. This statement is false because it's not you are awesome with a lowercase A. So we go down here to the else statement, and we change message to you are awesome, but with an uppercase A. Now, you are awesome with a capital A is not equal to you are awesome with a lowercase A. So on every subsequent click, we evaluate if message string equals you are awesome, lowercase A. And that's always going to be false because message string has you are awesome, but with an uppercase A. Those two things are not equal. So with each click, we end up assigning you are awesome with an uppercase A to the message string variable. So here's how better programming with constants instead of literals can reduce the likelihood of this kind of error. I'm going to go right up at the start of the button closure right after the first curly, and I'm going to create two constants named message one and message two, and I'm going to assign them to our two strings. Now, first, a quick aside, introducing constants and showing the difference between constants and variables. Now, let's experiment with constants in a playground. I happen to have my conditional playground open from the prior lesson, so I'll flip there with a command accent mark. You can open your old playground now if you'd like. You can even create a new one. It doesn't matter. And let's create a variable named pi, pi. So var pi equals, and we'll set this equal to 3.14. Now warning, since pi is a variable, we can vary its contents. In programming, we say variables are mutable or changeable. And that's actually a bad thing in this case. Let me show you. Now that we've created pi, we can use an equation like this. You might remember from middle school math, the circumference of a circle is 2 times pi times r. So if I wanted to calculate the value of the circumference of a circle with a radius of 5, say, I could write var circumference equals 2 star pi star 5. Then underneath that, I can print circumference. But setting pi to a variable is bad programming practice. Pi should not be mutable or changeable. It is a universal constant and should be impossible to change once it's been set. Let's imagine we hire a terrible programmer who makes a gaffe like this and accidentally changes pi to 11. Then we'll run our code, press shift return at the end, and gack! This is entirely the wrong answer. Now we can prevent this by defining pi as a constant. Constants are immutable, I am mutable, meaning they cannot be changed. And we define constants simply by using the let keyword instead of var. And if I did that in my code like I'm showing here, the bad programmer could never have reassigned pi to 11. Xcode would give an error like this, cannot assign to value, pi is a let constant. Just the kind of protection for pi that we want. Now, one way to think of the difference between constants and variables is that where variables act as a box that holds data and you can change the contents of the box, constants are like having data etched on the side of a block of concrete. It is unchangeable, which is what we want with pi. 
Another good thing, pi is defined in one place. So if we did decide we wanted a different value of pi, say a more accurate number like 3.14159926, a programmer makes this change only once where the constant's defined and initialized, and then everywhere in code that uses that constant pi will get the new, more accurate value the next time I distribute my app. By the way, I entered a literal value here to illustrate a point, but iOS actually gives you a very accurate value for pi, and we can use that by setting our pi constant to double, capital D, dot pi, shift return, and oh yeah, that's even more accurate. So use constants instead of variables if you know a value should never change, and there's also another advantage to using constants in Swift that you'll probably never see unless you write a really advanced app with lots of calculations like a complex video game, but constants are faster than variables. So if you're making lots of calculations, constants can give you a performance boost. So now let's head back to our you are awesome project and use constants. So I'll say let message one equals in double quotes, you are awesome, and then let message two equals in double quotes, you are great. Now every time I see you are awesome in here, I'm gonna get rid of the string and watch what happens as I start to type the word message. Oh, code completion knows about message one and message two. So I'm gonna select message one here, and in my else clause, I'm also gonna replace you are awesome with message one. Again, code completion shows up. And inside the if clause, I'm gonna replace you are great with message two. Again, code completion shows up. Nice. Run this and everything works fine. Now this is more code, but we get some real benefits from this. First, code completion shows up. Second, I need a variable name in here. If I misspell the variable name, Xcode will tell me that this is an error. Notice here I made a typo, and instead of saying message one, I said massage one. And then I get an error from Xcode saying cannot find massage one in scope. What that means is this thing massage one has never been created. It's never been defined with a let statement or with a var statement. Xcode says, you're talking about this massage one. I got no idea what that is. And this is much better because when I had the typo between the two literal strings, Xcode couldn't warn me about the string literal differences because it didn't know what I wanted to do with my code. So we reduce typos we get code completion, and we get better error handling, so this would be considered to be a better, more professional way to code. And if you want to, you can create two constants for our image strings too, so why don't we call them let, how about image string one and image string two? So image string one equals the string hand dot thumbs up, and let image string two equals sun dot max dot fill. Then I'll replace this string literal of hand dot thumbs up with image string two, and sun dot max dot fill with image string one. And it works just as we did before, but this is better programming because we get code completion. And once we have a constant, we can select it from code completion instead of having to worry about a typo occurring when we retype the same string over and over again. Now my constants are also useful because if I want to make a change, I only change the definition of the constant in one place instead of having to go through my code and change all of the string literals. For example, if I have an Italian friend and want to modify this app for them, I can change message one to say fantastico and message two to say grande. Then run the code and your bud is likely to say grazie, thanks for sharing your swifty skill to cheer me up. Now I also want to introduce a very important concept in Swift called scope. Notice that these constants were defined in the closure for the button. So these constants only exist inside the curlies where they were defined. If I try to refer to them up top, say changing the text views message string to text message one, note that code completion doesn't know message one exists. I get an error, cannot find message one in scope, but it did know message one existed down between the button curlies. So for now, let me change text so it refers to message like it was before. Now how come this message variable without any number after it can be used in the button curlies down here and in the text view string here well that's because it was defined under the outermost struct and because the text view and the button view also exist inside of that struct you can use message string in those views too so when you define a data structure like a variable or constant it's available to any code inside the curlies where it was declared so just to show you, if I double click on this first struct curly, the whole struct is highlighted, and any variables or constants that I define up top just after these curlies will be available to everything inside the curlies. So we say that these values have struct-wide scope. Everything inside the curlies knows that these values exist. So message and image string were defined inside these outer curlies, and since the image view, text view, and button view are also inside these curlies, both those variables are completely available to all three views. Now down here I have all four constants that are defined inside the curlies for the buttons. They're not available to anything outside these curlies. See if I try to add message one up here in the text view, I get an error that says cannot find message one in scope. 
Ah, now you know what that error is referring to. So Curly's determined scope, and scope means where that value is accessible. A value is available inside the Curly's where it was defined. It's not available outside of those Curly's. And to further illustrate this, if I cut out the let statements from inside the button closure and paste them under the state variable, the code still works, but the constants now have struck wide scope, and they can be accessed anywhere inside of these Curly's. So now I can change message to message1, and I won't get any error. Cool. But I really don't want to do that, since I don't need to access the constants outside the button closure. So I'll undo this. And it's best to declare and initialize these constants inside the button. This way they won't pollute the rest of my code completion. And what I mean by that is, if I type message somewhere outside of where message1 and message2 should be used, they're never going to pop up. And this is also going to prevent anybody from accidentally choosing message1 or message2 at a part in my code where they shouldn't be used. So good programming practice is to define a value at the top level where it's going to be used, but not outside that level. So Swifter, remember where you saved your conditional playground. We're going to refer to that in our next lesson when I introduce two other methods for evaluating conditionals, but also feel good about more big learning from this lesson. We applied what we learned about conditionals in the previous lesson so that we could complete the single button challenge. And in the solution to the challenge, we learned about constants and the advantages of using constants. And we learned about scope, that values are only available inside the curlies where they were defined. Swifter, if there is one constant, it's that your skills are constantly improving. Continue to hack.